you know, when you think of inclusion, a shock like COVID may affect people in very unexpected ways. And so you may have preconceived notions on who's hurt or who's, who's, who's uh, more safe from this situation, but they may not fall along the actual lines of what happened. The vulnerable may have been non-traditional vulnerable people. People lost jobs in sectors we hadn't necessarily thought of as sectors would get affected in a normal recession or something. And so suddenly this question of inclusion in COVID and the importance of data becomes really powerful because who is being excluded may change very drastically in crisis. And so for me, this became really a, a powerful calling to say, look, if we're gonna deal with this seriously, as much as there is a pandemic, there also is an infodemic, and this is a word people have used. Um, and that infodemic is gonna be critical for us to get help in, in real time for people who really need it. Countries were uh, kind of struggling to figure out kind of what sorts of policies to deploy. We had like incredible innovation in terms of, of, of data. And, you know, you need to be wise when you're interpreting it. So, for example, if you're looking at kind of uh, bank account data from a major bank and you're saying, oh, well, look at those people at the bottom of our sample. They, they have more in their accounts than they did a year ago. Well, that's that's right for this group of people. But remember, what about all the unbanked people? Those are the people who are uh, that we're worried about most and they're just not even captured in the sample. So I think the data is very useful, but I also just think you as the user have to understand, is this the sample I want to capture? Is this the you know, the concept, you know, credit card spending is by no means, you know, all of consumption. So I just think it takes um, kind of some, uh, you know, training to be able to kind of use this data right. Uh, and if you don't have that, then you might add to noise and you might add to the biases that are already out there. First, we all need to think outside the box and to be open to thinking about things differently than we've done before, especially when we're reacting to new crises, to new, to new issues in the world. I think you also raise a point and it you know, connects to what everybody's been talking about. The data is just not in a vacuum that you go and you look at the data and it tells you stuff. That one of the things we want to think about in the course, and in fact, I think a lot about in my teaching is just the theoretical frameworks that we think about in the background that might be driving the data generation process. And by that, I really mean in, in sort of layman's terms, or what are the questions we wanna ask? What are the predictions we have in place? What do we expect to see in the data under different types of circumstances? And how can we use our, not just use the data and just use it blindly, but really add the thought that's needed into it to really understand it well, to understand the biases well, to know that we're asking even the right questions that we need and getting the right data that we need for the policy questions that we have. And so, and I, I think this is very important to note that it's not just about, you know, data and data is here and it's dumped in and we just throw it into some model, but really the kind of thought needed to make sure that the data is speaking to the real world and it's speaking to the needs of people.